Greetings, comrade. Today we're making shi, or Russian cabbage soup. Alright, so one of the first things we have to start with is our sausage. Because you have to add some type of meat. I find sausage is best in, in a soup like this because it adds a lot of flavor. This does not have much flavor, the cabbage doesn't. So this will add a lot of flavor and some broth fats floating around. So I couldn't actually get the sausage that I wanted, which would be like a salt and pepper sausage. Uh, you know, shortages, political stuff. So I got this. It's an andouille sausage, it's close enough. It'll just be a little bit spicier than what it should actually be. What she should be. We're gonna take this, and you always wonder why I got the big ass frying pan in the bottom of my oven. It's so I can cook these two of these sausages in here at once. And while they're already cooked, it's best to brown them so you can get good flavor on them. And we'll let those cook for a while. While they were doing that, I'm going to prep the rutabaga. A lot of people make a mistake and they add potato to this. It's not potato, uh, Russia rutabaga runs, grows there. And rutabaga is like a, well it's this. It's like a big ass turnip with a really solid dense meat that has a unique flavor. They ship them here, they, sh they coat them in wax, so you gotta cut off the skin and the wax. I just take a knife and slice it all off. And do this while the meat's cooking. I would have got two rutabagas, but they're crazy expensive right now. that, throw away the peels. I already cut the base off and I snipped off the top edge too. Let's try to find a nice easy way to cut in half. Oh, this one's hard. Okay. We will try smaller sections then. There we go. This takes a little bit of work. Oh, my meat's browning. Yes, I do have the non-stick frying pans I could also cook this in. But I find that frying meat in a cast iron pan adds a certain flavor that you don't get from non-cast iron pans. So that's why I have a cast iron pan, just for cooking meat. I love being a carnivore. Okay, we'll take this half here. Our goal is about half inch, half inch to three quarter inch strips, so we can come into chunks like that. If you ever made pasties, it's about the same size as a pasty. Same as all the vegetables that we cooked here, if you notice. They're half carrot, just like that, on thick carrots. The mushroom is sliced like that. So when it cooks, this is like that, it will fit in a whole spoon and it'll occupy the spoon. So you have a spoon of some type of food and some broth. Because this is all just a way to turn some vegetables into a cheap meal. You know, it's peasant food. Little bad part, we'll cut that out. Put that knife before I remove my own fingers. I'm keeping them spoon size. Alright, 
to check out my meat. Yes, getting nice brown now. Whoop, one got away. Two second roll. to throw these right in the pot so I got room to cook the rest, cut the rest off. The pot, as you saw, is the big ass, the biggest pot that I have, big stew pot. Stall and it's not. Now, rutabaga is, as you saw, very hard. So we have to start boiling that up first. So we put that in, in a giant stock pot. I start with some water. If you're wondering, that is eight cups of hot water. And we set that on boil. And we're gonna let that boil first. Why that's boring, oh, let me stir my meat. Cast iron pan retains heat for quite a while, so they're still cooking in here. Now, while that's doing that, we can add some flavor because I don't like my soup just really bland. So I have just some chicken cubes here. I know, chicken, sausage, but these really don't taste like chicken if you were asking me. They, these things just kind of taste like salt and a little bit of some type of flavor. So we throw those in with the water. We're also gonna add our dry powders. Now this consists of two, two teaspoons of salt because salt is one of the major ingredients in here. It has a teaspoon of paprika because you know I love paprika and it has a teaspoon of black pepper. Okay, there's that in there. And we're going to add two and, or three bay leaves, because my bay leaves are a little old, so we're adding three of them. And then we're adding celery, 
celery seed, the thyme leaves. Because my family won't eat celery, so I'm not putting that in there. And we're putting thyme in there because that adds a good flavor too with the soup. And we will stir this up. And we'll let this boil for 20 minutes or so till these start to get soft before we add the carrots or anything else. Because if we added it all now, everything would get mushy before these hard things became edible. And so now we wait, I guess now when I'd be chopping up the rest here, which would be two large carrots and you can tell they are big fat carrots because you want solid meat here. So let me get a spoon. So when you scoop in your bowl of soup and you have a piece of carrot on there, it occupies your whole spoon. Same as a mushroom. When you have a piece of mushroom, they'll be a little smaller when they cook. When you have some cabbage, it occupies a whole spoon and becomes like a meal that way. Same as the sausage. That's why we cut them extra large like this, and that's two carrots, about three large mushrooms, one small onion, and that's just chopped in large, one small head of cabbage. And the rutabaga is already in there. If you notice, all these vegetables are, well, except for the mushrooms, are underground crops. So they're very cold hardy. They're very war resistant. They're, you can plant them and forget about them and people don't see them there and animals stay out of them. So that's why it's good peasant food. Cabbage, cabbage is like lettuce on steroids. It's a very, if you've never had cabbage before, it's a very hardy, thick plant, unlike lettuce, which is fragile. And now we just wait for that to boil and we'll be back in a little while. Okay, now that the rutabaga is soft, I can add the carrots to the water. And we let them boil for a while or simmer. And we'll be back in 10 more minutes. Here's what we got so far and the carrots are getting, they're about half soft. So now we can start adding the rest of the stuff here. I'm gonna start with the meat cause that's the important part to me. Oh, that one got away. I don't want to get all the grease on the pan, so I'm not just tipping the pan into the pot. Don't worry, we are gonna add more water after we get done, but you can always add more water, but you, it's real hard to remove water, so we add the broth part sparingly. Now, one small, one onion chopped. Three mushrooms sliced. Stir that in a bit. for the main ingredient besides water, of course. One small head of cabbage. The mean lettuce. I don't like the big solid chunk. I miss that one. Thank you. 
That's what you say. There's no soup. It's all solid. It will cook down. It'll cook down. But we are going to add some more water. You can tell that right now. I'm adding three more cups of water. Now you can see the water is just below the, the cabbage line. If you dig down, it's about an inch below. And that should be out pretty good. When it all cooks down, there'll be plenty of moisture. There'll be, and I'm just trying to fold it all together gently. I need a hot pad so I don't burn my hand. Use this great hot pad here. And we'll let this simmer for a good 20 to 40 minutes, probably about 25 minutes, and we'll check on it then. Okay, it's been a while. I had to add some more water because it was more like stew than soup. You can see the sausage kind of settled at the top, so you always got to stir it. But that's... Oh, I'm going to get me a bowl. It's really hardy. I'm gonna probably add more, more liquid to it. I was just hungry, so I wanted to try some now. That looks good. This is for like the rich peasant, I guess. Mm. No, it's really good. That's awesome. And I can add more water and thin it down if I had more people. This will last me a very long time, a couple days in the fridge. It's been real easy cooking with Robert and I'm done. <laughs>